that's my jam. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of the Auto Trader Podcast. My name is Wandi Desishi. And I'm George Mini. I'm back in the studio. I love being here. I really hate the virtual shows. George. Weren't we here last week? Yeah, but you know, it's been on and off. I was looking we through. Were like we did one show. We did like Run. three shows. George. We did three. Yeah, virtually, and it was the worst. Jeez, I hate my those goodness. Shows. <laughs> we almost did today's show virtually too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, anyway, we're cutting it close. What we're are we talking about today? So it's the Auto AI episode. So this week... I um, love the way you name these episodes. Auto yeah, I have AI to. Episode. That's how I... That's how I <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? It's almost like the Hamilton show. <laughs> One of these days. It's coming <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, so we're talking about the difference between machine learning and AI, specifically in the auto space. I know you have some thoughts on that, and I, I want to pick your brain a little bit. Um, and then we're going to talk about how AI is going to be revolutionizing the auto industry. How it's going to change also retailing because I think that's what's going to be one of the biggest changes how people shop. Mm-hmm. I think um, not just AI, but machine learning and just... I guess innovation with regards to using internet and the internet of things is how it's going to change how people shop for cars. And then maybe let's talk about if you think AI is going to be replacing people. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the first, my first thought when yeah. you said the word AI, AI, I mean, I think it's the like a buzzword. Now. Yeah. I think the world's gone AI freaking mad. Yeah. yeah to be sure. honest. Um, I mean, it's been around for longer than the world's gone mad. I was about to say. Yeah. So, there's a, there's a difference between. AI, or should I say there's a subtle difference between AI and machine learning? Yes. Um, you know, machine learning is a, uh, in, in, my, in my understanding, a little bit of a subset of AI. You know, yeah. you, can, you can think of true artificial intelligence where the machine can mimic mm-hmm. human mm. uh, behavior, uh, emotion, um, and then there's AGI, artificial general intelligence, where the where the machine is sentient. It can it's actually it's learning as it goes. No, it yeah. knows that it exists. Oh, uh, okay. That's we're, not, we're, not, we're not there yet, right? No. That's like Skynet. That's well, what there's some people that claim that Bard is uh, is sentient. Bard is the the Google's Google Google one. Yeah. You know. Yeah, there was that. There was that one uh, engineer that kind of you know made went himself famous. Yeah, went a bit rogue. <laughs> um, but. But 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 so that's artificial general intelligence. When the when the AI realizes it exists, yeah, I mean that's scary stuff. That's AI. AI uh, that's 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 iRobot stuff. Yeah, you yeah. know. Okay, are we there yet? Who knows? This is what Elon Musk is kind of it's kind of fearing for, fearing for warning, warning us to slow down a little bit, slow down, get regulation, pull the plug. So that that's what he suggests is have a hardware like a hard off switch of some sort where you can turn the bloody thing off. Yeah, you know, so because uh, because what if AGI gets into social media or gets into how will you know it's not human mm. if it mm. kind of can act and react like a human and it knows it exists? It's going to avoid being detected. You can imagine <laughs> like criminals would get really, really, really creative with you know some of the things. Oh, that criminals wouldn't get creative. The AGI will get creative. Exactly, but I mean you, that's what I'm saying. Where do we get a criminal with AGI? Let me say the crime and the scams will get really, really complex. Well, the online ones, so just stay yeah. in the physical world. So that's kind of AGI, artificial intelligence, obviously a subset to that, and then you get machine learning. Yeah. Okay, so so artificial intelligence is 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 mainly being able to mimic cognitive functions of a human being. Yeah. Uh, and that is uh, built on uh, through things like neural nets, etc. Then you get uh, machine learning. Yeah. Um, and machine learning is really just a set of decisions. Yeah. Uh, that so my, my that a machine makes based on uh, data, right? So well, data that you throw at it, and exactly. it learns from that data. But it's not artificial intelligence at the level of cognitive function and uh, neural networks. So that is my, and that's that's my kind basic of like understanding of it as well. I mean, it stretches my brain thinking about this stuff. Yeah. So for an example, an advanced driving system, so basically on a Tesla when, or even a Volvo, or a lot of these cars right now, when you're driving that's not and AI. it stops, that's not AI. No. That's purely just machine learning. That's machine it's learning. It's identified based off a lot or of even data. Just an, or or just, uh, just not even machine learning, just an algorithm. Yeah. Because machine learning is is fed, is, 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 is it's algorithms. It's information, right? And it's, yeah. it's also, to, would you say to some degree that it's also learning in terms of... No. This, not is, this is a box that's like here, my, I my can't go past this. My anymore. iPace, for instance, that's not that's machine not learning. It's not that's machine That's not even learning. machine learning. Either. No. It's not learning my driving style. Yeah. It's, 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 it's giving an output based on an input. 100%. That's, that's all it is. It's an, there's an algorithm there. So, so let, let's say the autom not the autonomous driving, the um, uh, um, the cruise control, the adaptive cruise control, mm. right? Follows the car in front at a certain distance. Mm. Set of parameters, it knows, act in this way when you give me that set of parameters. That's yes. it. it. That's won't machine learning. That's not even machine learning. I, I would it's say not learning anything. 
Yeah, but you've, you've given it a set of inputs and a set of rules, essentially. And it's now recognizing what's happening. It's not, it's not changing. It's so not machine changing. learning is it's, it changes its output based on its input. Okay. So, so, you know, if, if I kind of like try and describe it in my simple terms, um, it's really just an algorithm. Distance from the car in front of me based on this sensor. Stick to that. Yeah. So what about, let's go, let's, let's take one further and go into AI. So would you say that there are vehicles on the road today? Because I would arguably say there are one or two um, with AI systems. Tesla, I think, is probably the only one. I would go, have you ever used the Mercedes knee system by any chance? No. So it's almost like it's voice assistance or it's almost like a Siri, ultimately, um, where it's trying to mimic a human experience. It's trying to mimic. That's different. Alexa, mimic, yeah. Alexa tries to mimic a human experience. Uh, you know, is that machine learning or is it AI? <sighs> Man, I, I wouldn't even go as far as calling it either. I think it's to your points. Um, it's games, it's trying to mimic, but I wouldn't go as far as, as saying that it's it's learning. Um, or well, machine it's, learning, it's I suppose, better. could do that. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, like which one is Siri and um, I mean it's a it's a it's a good it's a good question to ask. But in the cars themselves, mm. I think it's a stretch to say that something is a neural net mm. um, inside most of the cars today. I think Tesla is the closest. Yeah, hundred percent. So moving on, so what is the future of AI and also if you had to kind of let's jump twenty years into the future where could even be sooner now. People are saying it's no. It's here now. It's in the Tesla. I mean, look at what Tesla's doing with their uh, with their um, their robot. What's that thing called? Uh, which robots? Oh, that little humanoid. The thing. humanoid one. That's yeah. It's not little. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, as big as I you I and I me. Do you know um, what it's called? But I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I think it's called the Tesla bot. I'm not sure. Tesla robot. What's it called? It's real creative. Uh, yeah, real creative. Exactly. <laughs> um, what is this bloody thing called now? Not too sure, but I know what you're talking about. Tesla bot. That's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real creative name. It's called an, an, an autonomous humanoid robot. Mm. A little humanoid thing. Yeah, yeah, the autonomous humanoid. Well, it's only called humanoid because it looks like us. Outside of the robots, let's say the driving experience. How is that going to change as a result of this amazing tech that is AI? Well, full autonomous driving, Wendy. Yeah, you know, that's the first that's one. That's and, and, and Tesla's trying to get there. And, yeah. they're, and they're trying to use cameras and visual mm. um, cues to teach the, uh, the system to drive. Mm. Um, you know, and you can see how much they're battling. Yeah, you know they they're getting it right, but they're not getting it right. Where and and that's and arguably still like on a machine learning sort of mm, level. Would you know. would you go as far as saying it's it no, it's they've fully they've got they've got they've got, they've got proper autonomous stuff going there. Um, yeah. and I think at the end of the day, um, if anybody's leading this AI race from an automotive point of view, it's obviously Tesla. Mm. I'm not. So, I don't think. I don't think any other OEM. Um, and maybe I'm wrong, but any other OEM has proper neural network machine uh, uh, artificial intelligence in their vehicles. Yeah, agreed. So there's other things that they people might have, have assistance, like yeah. like uh, the not aids. Yeah, because I think a lot of people think aids are you know autonomous to some level, but it's not really it's not the same thing, right? If, for instance, enhanced navigation. So this is when the cars start speaking to each other. Let's. I think um, Google Maps. Well, that's the, in the Internet of, of Things. Exactly. Mm. Would you say that that's going to be a thing where, or when you say neural network, where the, the, everything is starting to communicate with each other, um, it's starting to learn from each other, it's starting to kind of give you solutions as a result of that? And you're pushing the boundaries of my mind. So, um, so the Internet of Things is just the connectedness of mm. um, uh, things, things in the really, world, yeah. right? Like your traffic light and the cars around each other uh, being able to communicate. That's the Internet of Things. Now, Inside that communication is data transfer. Mm -hmm. Now, the each each of those elements being able to understand the other, mm -hmm. um, you know, is is part of where the uh, the neural network would exist. Somebody has to like write that. Somebody has to yeah. put it in place. That's not done yet. Um, you know, we, you might have a situation where a traffic light is not artificial intelligence. It just kind of tells you when it's green and red, mm -hmm. um, but the car can. A car can predict when it's going to be green. So when it's going to be green, speed, cetera, cetera. because it knows the robot is telling it, I'm going to turn green in 120 seconds. Oh, okay. So I have to do this speed in order to catch that light green. 
Mm -hmm. And I know all the other cars, the position of all the other cars around me. So, exactly. so and that's what Tesla is uh, ultimately kind of, I think, uh, heading towards that autonomous experience. Do you believe there'll be a time when all cars are now speaking to each other from different companies? It has to come. Yeah. It has to come. Uh, if we want a world where it's truly autonomous driving, that's going to have to be the reality of, of, of things. Well, uh, remember, Tesla's already got the, the, to a large degree autonomous driving um, ahead of everybody else. And yeah other cars aren't there so and it's able to predict to a certain degree it's um, like level four autonomy or, or something yeah, it's, 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 at, at it's, it's, it's able to predict a non-autonomous car's mm. movements not I mean not predicted but know more or less what's happening so yeah. if a car's veering across kind of the road its, its behavior and, and kind of trying to read its behavior exactly next, yeah. so does the autonomous vehicle need everything else to be autonomous probably not 100 percent. so if we had to wait for that we'll wait another 50 years what are our personalized driving experiences? What do you mean? So basically customizing the, how the vehicle drives depending on the individual who's driving it. Do you think that's going to be something that's going to be, you know, automated? Um, do you think that's something that could, cha could change the results of AI? Uh, what do you mean? Learning from your driving style? Yeah. Well, I think that's probably simple for, some, for a car like Tesla to do. Um, you know. I haven't really seen that yet, but I mean, it seems like a kind of a... a That's know, a no-brainer. Yeah, it seems know. like the next step. If you... Like I know some cars, you can program them. You can tell them that, you know, depending on how many drivers are driving the car, you can tell it's driver one, for instance, and then it can kind of change the driving experience. Yeah, but that's based, on a, suspension, that yada, yada, it's based yeah. on a bunch of inputs. My car yeah. does that. I put it in yeah. eco mode and it drives softly. So now all you need to do is tie that to driver one, two, and three. It's like, okay, this person prefers eco mode. This person prefers softer suspension. Mm. This person prefers, um, you know, harsher braking. Mm. But those are settings. Mm. When the car starts to learn those things, that's uh, that, 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 that'll be interesting. Yeah, 100%. On its own. On its own, yeah. Oh, there's a different driver driving this car. Oh, are and how you would this it know? How would it know that it's a different driver? See, this is where it gets a bit kind of shaky for me. It's, now, it's so. all possible. I mean, <laughs> like every one of us have, uh, you know, <laughs> you 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 have a signature in your in your in your iris that's yeah. that's unique to you. You got a fingerprint. Does it scare you at all? Me? Yeah. No. As somebody who's in the industry, does this the auto industry? Yes. Uh, does, does it scare you? No, I think the, the faster sizes. the better. I I want to see tomorrow. Me too. Um, I'm. I got two feet in the future already. Like I'm. I'm definitely. I'm not scared of it. I'm not. I mean, I take. I take Elon Musk's point that we've got to be careful and we need regulation. Yeah. Um. But what's going to be is going to be. So something that you mentioned earlier when we started was the AI tech and machine learning is something that's been around for years and years. A lot of people. ChatGPT is obviously you know kind of you know, steamrolled and and it's now the the new thing. Um. Essentially, with regards to this, but it has been around for a long time. Um, just in different phases. And different I mean, I think levels. it's. Uh, I think. Uh, I think you know th this neural network was thought up um, like in, uh, decades ago. Let's see when. Mm. Um, y you know, I think the father of this thing um, was like in the 19, 1958, mm. Frank Rosenblatt. What did Frank do? Is it, why the is he first, the father? The first artificial neural network was invented in 1958 by psychologist Frank Rosenblatt uh, called Perceptron. Mm -hmm. That was intended as a model on how you, the human brain processes visual data. So that's why Tesla is using visual data, I'm guessing. And learn to recognize objects, what Tesla is doing too. Um, other researchers have since used similar ANNs to study human cognition. Well, there you have it. 1958, some guy named Frank <laughs> 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 became the father of AI. Yeah, no, these things don't come. This is, this is not like, you know, it doesn't come about tomorrow. Yeah, you know, it takes know. a little bit of time. It takes but look, let's be honest, though. It is, it is moving at a rate which... Um, well, now it's getting know, exponential, right? Because people can play with it every single day. Um, everyone has some, they, some level uh, of sort of... Um, I mean, I read yeah. something the other day that, um, uh, and this will go down to cars as well, um, artificial intelligence... Um, is only now possible. So GPT-4 is only now possible because of, n not because the neural net wasn't buildable. So they, it's not because they couldn't couldn't build it. So two things fed into it being available now. And that is computing power. Yeah. So that was the one hurdle. And the other hurdle was just the, um, the digitizing of the world's information. Okay. It hasn't been digitized until A lot of things were in recently. books and, and yes, yeah. It was in physical form. Mm. So, so you couldn't throw enough information at 
the neural network in order to get the experience we're getting with GPT-4. And that's going to come to cars. It's already in the Teslas mm. to a certain degree. They're trying to build the Tesla bot, mm. um, which they're getting right. Um, you know, so this is the future. If you dri- driving, I don't believe driving is going to be something that humans do. Mm. I think it's going to be like, what? You've said this a few times. Yes. <laughs> is there you drive? <laughs> what is driving? Why, why are you like, driving? Yeah. Like, Wendy, do you know how to ride a horse? No. Have you no, no. ever ridden a horse? I've ridden a horse, but I wouldn't go as far as saying I know how to ride a horse. Like, you if know. you gave me a horse right like now. If like, I put you on a horse, horse and I said to you, okay, go, go full go, go, speed go, go and get it, like, go I would not be able to do that. Though. You'd probably be scared. <laughs> Why? I don't know how to ride a horse. <laughs> yeah. A hundred years ago, yeah. is you, if somebody said to you, you don't know how to ride a horse, mm, mm. I think the same thing's going to happen with cars. 100%. I think a few things are going to change, though, as a result of AI, specifically in cars. I don't know how Chad feels about that, but, uh, you know, maybe maybe it's when he's an old I've had, I've had a few conversations with, um, with you know, with the journos um, with regards to this, but it's on different aspects. It's not necessarily with yeah. regards to driving. I think their age is in the sweet spot that uh, they're going to watch it happen from their, uh, um, you from know, their Porsche. from their old age home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> me I'm, d- I'm saying something about myself i'll be watching <laughs> it from a walking stick <laughs> uh, moving on so i think um the automotive the automotive space is going to change more about how people actually buy and, and, and sell cars i think that's going to be great now there, yes now 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 there's an opportunity yeah you know, you know for, um, for things to change quite quickly and i think that it's going to change for the good so for instance personalized marketing is something that's been kind of um kind of raised which is just re- learning your behavior and ultimately assisting you in, in, in finding your car or finding a solution for, for buying or selling. A lot of a lot of the um, a lot of the usefulness of um, the the current language based artificial intelligence like GPT four and Chat GPT um, uh, comes uh, come comes about with the assistant. I was about to say yeah. it's in a highly intelligent assistant. Mm. And and I think personalized marketing uh, kind of plays into that assistant world where your assistant will know that you're interested in something and mm. then be able to feed it to you. Yeah. I mean, I think we've, for the most part, if you're shopping online for anything, not just a vehicle, um, you, you're really in that stage of having some sort no, of you just Now at the moment, you're just getting spammed. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's learning. I mean, there's many scenarios where I've shopped for something and it gave me something that I didn't know I needed yet. Um, but later on, I would need it and I'm like, oh, this is perfect, perfect timing. Mm. Um, and that's based off of my behavior. It's not just like random spamming. There's, there's some sort of level of personalization in terms of the marketing that, that I've, I'm being fed. I think it's, it's, it's rudimentary compared to what it could be with artificial intelligence. At the moment, it's not really artificial neural networks that are feeding you that information. Maybe Google to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but at the moment, you know, uh, I mean, Google uses signaling. Exactly, yeah. And, uh, and you know. Pixels on, on websites, which kind of. Well, they use signals. So, you know, your behavior will drive the signals. Mm. Um, but at the moment, it still feels very spammy. It mm. doesn't feel as personalized as it should be. Just because I'm shopping for a pair of shoes today mm-hmm. and then I go out and buy it, how does that thing know that I've already bought the shoes and please stop spamming mm. me? That's a good point. Um, yeah. You know, so now I don't need I it mean, anymore. I mean, it does, right? It ultimately, it does. It Unless ultimately you click on that ad, then... Um, well, even if you clicked on that, the, 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 the world seems to think that you still need shoes mm. and you still get spammed with shoe ads. Mm. Um, and so, so a proper virtual assistant mm. will know that you've bought the shoes. Mm. Oh, you've bought the shoes. I'm not feeding you anything about Take shoes Take it off anymore. the list of things, you know. And that we're not there. We're list. not there. 100%. Before we end off, another two things. That I don't know why, we, why I use shoes and not cars because that's, this is an automotive podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and basically predictive, predictive maintenance. So, uh, you know, systems understanding exactly when you need uh, to, to maintain your car. It won't just be... Why do we need AI for that? Um, okay, I'm give you an example. So my car tells me when my next service is due. Yes, but right? that's not AI. But if there's something that's reading all the systems in my vehicle, telling me everything that's going on, I don't need to go and diagnose it. The car is oh, almost diagnosed. So you mean it's predictive itself. maintenance as in when something's about to go wrong. Exactly. Almost like, like almost it's reading, like not just like, I don't need diagnosis. The car is diagnosing itself. On an ongoing as basis. Go. Yeah. Yes. Um, the last thing is autonomous vehicles, which we've kind of touched on. Um, so I won't go into that again. And that's pretty much all the time we have. Well, let's spend today. 60 seconds on the race this weekend in. Baku. Baku, my favorite track. Uh, yeah. I think it's next week. 
Next week? Is it next week? Yeah. Okay. But I'm super excited. It's, oh, well. a, it's the one Let's I Let's talk want. about it next week. <laughs> the the producers are like, it's time. <laughs> <laughs>